My friends, we are in the last days and things around us are just exponentially increasing. We're living in unparalleled times. Just the other day was a few days ago, Iran attacked Israel. That is unheard of. That was the first time they actually attacked. They usually use proxies. We are ever close to World War III. I don't know if you guys know it or not, but our, our government paid for those missiles probably that were being dropped on Israel. And the only reason that Israel was protected is because of their Iron Dome and their technology that shoots down these missiles. So many were dropped on them, they would have been wiped out. But I want, I said that just so you know the times that we live in. Just That's one day of news. Every day there's something else. The red heifers are getting ready to be um, sacrificed so they have the ashes to start the temple. That's on the regular news. You can't say, oh no, that's just some crazy saying that. No, it's here. We're seeing it every day. That's why when asked why Hamas attacked when they did is because they said that red heifers have arrived. They know what's going on and this is part of World War III. This is part of the last days and the battles the Bible speaks of including Gog and Magog and a lot of other prophecies. All of these prophecies are lining up and you are living in the in the end of the age. They, it was called an age for a reason. They had it timed out in three so there was the age of creation, there was the age of Torah, and there was the age of grace. We are living, that's from the Essenes, by the way, and we're living in the end of the age of grace. We're at the end of the age, just as the Lord spoke of. This was the time he was speaking of when Jesus spoke about the end of the age, when the prophets spoke of the end of the age, when Paul, when Revelation speaks of the end of the age, it is this time we are living in. We're right at the door of the of the last days we're here we're stepping in <laughs> as never before we've already been there israel became a nation that was part of bible prophecy that really kicked it off in the 1940s and we're just seeing things exponentially increase every day but this video is uh, not exactly about that i wanted to talk to you about the ouchy words of jesus and there's so many false prophets in these days just as i said jesus said false prophets would come and they they weren't even of us or they wouldn't have went out from among us. I think that's a verse of Peter, if I believe right. Let me go where you want me to go, Holy Spirit, and only speak what you want me to speak. I thank you that these people have ears to hear and a heart that understands, Lord. I thank you that I speak in your spirit, in a spirit of love, but with boldness, and I don't hold anything back. There's false teachers in our time that are leading people astray. They think they're doing right. I think I think they, in their heart they think they're doing right, but they're not. They're being deceived. I was there myself starting in 2012. I saw a vision of a third eye. I had a dream of this third eye. On my, it was a very vivid dream. And from there I started down this downward spiral into new age, and which led, it starts out you're thinking you're being loving and everybody else is wrong, but leads you down, down into darkness. Satan is an angel of light, and he leads you down this path of destruction where everything, and you're turning everything around in the Bible till you make Jesus just some guru of love, just like another avatar, one more Buddha that was sent just to teach us how to love. And Jesus is not that. He's the Savior. He's Lord. He's coming back as King to rule and reign. And they say, what I wanted to tell you this because the ouchy words, they get rid of stuff that Jesus said and they pretend he never said it. And we're going to talk today a little bit about that because the deconstructionists is what they're called, the deconstructionists. And um, we, they're very prevalent right now because it's the spirit of the age trying to lead people astray with itching ears, doctrines of demons. And it is itching ears. These, as you fall into these things, I fell deeper and deeper into perversion, into darkness, very dark places, even in, that leads you into goddess worship. They tell you that Lucifer was the real, the good guy, the one that wanted to give you knowledge. And the goddess of lust, it brings lust into your life, it's sexual perversion. It's a path you don't want to go down, and it leads to very dark places. They'll tell you that hell isn't real, there's no hell, that there's, they'll tell you, you don't even have to really believe everybody's already saved. They'll tell you that, you'll hear that, you'll hear, um, they just get rid of the cross of Christ, the power, the blood. They, it's just like it talked about in the New Testament, they deny the power. They think they're Christians, but they deny the power. It's just fluff. There's nothing but cotton candy fluff, and it's it's terrible. Okay, but the, I wanted to read you the ouchy scriptures of Jesus. Some of these scriptures that they just don't like. And I was reading in Matthew today. Let's see. Uh, 
He answered and said, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the sons of the kingdom, but the weeds are the sons of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as weeds are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be the, at the end of this age. That's our time. The Son of Man shall send out his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who do evil, and will throw them into a fiery furnace. These are Jesus' words. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And then there's another place, I don't want to go there, but in Luke where Jesus says, I'll tell you who to fear. Don't fear man. Fear God who has, don't fear men that can kill you, but fear God who has the power to, to kill both, destroy both body and soul in, in a Gehenna or in hell and they'll go on and tell you oh Gehenna was just a garbage dump well how does God destroy your soul in a garbage dump it's just nonsense they will tell you there is a hell I'm telling you people Jesus warned over and over about it you think they're the ouchy words that Jesus doesn't say he's only a love hippie guru but it just isn't true he's coming back to rule and reign as Revelation says with fire in his eyes and a sword from his mouth He's been given all authority, and you have authority in his name. But your authority is to go out and bring freedom to these people that are, are lost in darkness and chains in the pits of hell. Not to go out and lie to them and tell them there is no demons. That's another thing they say. There's no demons. There's no devil. It's all in your mind. Psychology is what we need. That's what they'll tell you. And they still say they're a Christian. They still believe in Jesus. Believe what? They just believe he's some hippie guru. You know, Jesus did say to love, love brings freedom to those bound in chains and tells the truth. And he told me that we're in a Jonah moment, months back, months and months back now, and we're gonna have to speak boldly. We're gonna have to proclaim his word because we're in that time in history where we have to speak with boldness. We're watchmen on the wall and their blood will be on our hands if we don't speak out. We have to speak out with boldness, the words, the truth, and set the captives free. Jesus has sent us out to set the captives free. And we are like his John the Baptist declaring his coming, heralding the king. The king is coming. Even in John the Baptist's day, the scenes believed, you know, that they were the ones in the wilderness who were heralding the coming. And, and John the Baptist was one of them. And he was heralding the coming of the king then. And they knew the king was coming twice. They had their prophecies that said he was coming first as, uh, to die on the cross for the sins and coming again to rule and reign. They knew all this before. The very things we believe in are saying that, that the deconstructionists attack. They even say there's no rapture. They say there's no rapture, no second coming. It's just love here and now. They don't realize people, this life is short. Wake up. We are not here for very long. This is like a weekend trip. You'll be gone before you know it, whether there's a, the rapture comes before you die, whether the end times are here and the Antichrist, tribulation, all that. It, even if not, you could die any second and you only have so long here to live. You've been given a little bit of time. You've been given a mission you were sent here for, a destiny and purpose you got to be about your father's business. Don't get entangled. A soldier doesn't get entangled up in the affairs of the world. Paul said we, we're soldiers of the cross we need to bring the message of the cross Jesus Christ crucified that's all I'll know we don't have to get puffed up in pride we have to bring people to repentance and bring them to the Lord and bring them to his mercy and grace he's not willing that one should perish the, the fields are ripe unto harvest so ripe they're rotting and there's no workers pray that that God will send workers into the field. You are the workers, wake up, but you can't go and take them a false message just because it feels good, just because it's popular to be a deconstructionist, just because it's popular to get along, to go along, to tell them they're okay in their sin. That's itching ears and I was there in sin. I lived in sin and I wanted to hear the itching ears, but I knew it was wrong in my heart, but I wanted to hear those itching ears scratchers of the itch just because I wanted to stay in that crap because the demons pile into you and they want you to stay there but we got to be strong in the Lord and the power is might and go and cast those devils out and set the people free I love you guys so much that's why I'm I'm spending my life doing this I could do other things but I love you 
And I'm here to set the captives free in Jesus' name and raise up his army and raise up prophets in these last days. You are sons and daughters of God, loved by the Spirit of God. You know his voice. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Do not bow to Satan.